you know, you, you produce a fantastic sort of dashboard that is interactive for a customer and then seeing that launch, you know, live to the customer so they can play around with it and take yeah. feedback. That's, that's, you know, it's just so exciting, right? Welcome to the Take Charge of Change podcast series, where Lex Perts will tell you everything you need to know about making your fleet fit for the future. In this episode, we will be talking about data and technology and how they can keep costs down and improve efficiency for the future. So data is really just absolutely central to, to our business. Uh, we've been more become a data company that leases vehicles as opposed to a leasing company that um, dumps data on our customers. Um, and from a customer perspective, the, uh, the cost of a, a fleet will be third on their P&L, probably behind buildings and people. And the, the whole kind of cost, safety, compliance, um, fit for purpose, sustainability of that fleet is absolutely crucial. And, and they need real-time data to kind of help them make uh, uh, crucial business decisions. But, you know, interested to hear your kind of views on, you know, the importance of that data and how it can help drive down costs. We're providing data, I guess, in two areas, really. One around the vehicle itself and, and the health of that vehicle, but also around the driver. So it's not just the safety of the driver for themselves, but also the public. And then there's all the, you know, the potential savings in and around that that would reduce total cost of ownership. So, you know, just as an example, if, if you can feed back to a driver that they, that they happen to be speeding quite a lot, if they just slow down a bit, one, it has an, an instant <coughs> impact, obviously, on, on speed and the reduction in accidents, but actually... That has a knock-on effect on maintenance costs, tyre wear, you know, braking components. All sorts of things can be reduced by simple actions, but it's it's getting all that data together and giving the fleet manager those sort of instant insights. And, and right now, if you if you think of how that data is pulled together and, and think of it from the the corporate user and uh, who's digesting all that data, it's coming to them in multiple different. Um, formats and from multiple sources um, and it's not the most kind of user friendly and intuitive to to use so keen to kind of get your thoughts on um, what we need to do as an industry to help that become more digestible more user friendly more able to kind of make faster decisions and and um, be more effective on, on that whole cost agenda I, I sit on a committee actually um for the Association of Fleet Professionals at an LCV committee. And one of the first agenda points when, when I got on that group was they wanted to talk about telematics mm. and data. So we're, we're, st we're trying to sort of develop the platform to allow allow the fleet manager to customise their own dashboard to so sort of focus on what they want to focus on. And of course, now with AI coming into it, start introducing things mm. like an AI chatbot type uh, interaction. So if the fleet manager just wants to get to an instant piece of information, they can just ask the platform a question. And now with the move to EVs and carbon reduction, they're now becoming the sustainability manager in some cases. So they need to better report on what they're doing around reducing carbon. Um, so they need so many different aspects of information now. If we can't give it to them in the format that they need, then they're not going to be able to do their jobs. I think the fleet managers are starting to expect more collaboration as well. Mm. You know, I've spoken to a fleet director for a very big fleet in the UK. And then they said to us, look, I want you in the room as a telematics provider. And actually, I want this manufacturer in the room because I take more of their vehicles than anyone else's. And I want you guys to tell me how you're going to work together to, to sort of, you know, enhance my data. If you like. me, and, me and Craig went to a meeting with one of our larger corporate customers and had exactly the same conversation where they said, this is our telematics provider. We want you to be working closely with them. Yeah, and, um, you know, especially looking at the sort of transition to electric vehicles now and the ZEF mandate, you know, that we, you know, over the next few years, we're going to see it sort of accelerate. We're working with the customers now, not just on trying to manage the TCO of an EV, but actually managing energy generally. So whilst we would have, you know, we have route optimization in our platform, now it's like, well, can you route optimize based on my preferred charging network? Or we have depot-based chargers, so we'd prefer our drivers to use those locations if possible. So... That whole area of TCO that historically would have been around, you know, the running cost of the vehicle, but now there's a plethora of different charging options. So, you know, we've created an EV services platform now that's integrating with charge point providers, 
energy providers. If you don't manage EVs properly, the cost, you know, we know how much it can cost a public charge point compared to home. And there's a very differential when they're in the middle. So, you know, that's managing those costs is going to be key for fleets moving forward as they transition. We've started to provide a lot of insights for our customers around charging behaviour. And this is with some cars, but also commercial vehicles, because they're already seeing, you know, I think range anxiety is starting to go away, yeah. um, certainly on cars. But you, you do still see those exceptions where, you know, people get to 50% mm. and, and they get a bit nervous. Um, so we, we try you know, to highlight now to the to the fleet managers to say, look, these ones probably didn't need to charge, mm. you know, and you can optimise it. We can report on regenerative braking now as well. Wow, that's so you start stuff. to see how the drivers are actually engaging with the vehicle and making the charge bigger. So there's lots of areas we can start to report on to help the fleet manager, but not just the fleet manager, help the drivers, because they don't often get a great handover yeah. in terms of this is how you should drive it. And, yeah, yeah. And, and it's amazing what you can get from a, from a vehicle if, if you know how to drive it. Still over 90% of commercial vehicles, they're, they're petrol and diesel. Um, and therefore, they have all the mechanical parts that, that can go wrong. Yeah. We're, we're currently um, uh, piloting a, a process using the data from um, warning lights going on to try and proactively kind of service um, the, the vehicles um, and using... The, the, the kind of um, telematics and in-vehicle uh, information to, to yeah. effectively trigger us to pull these uh, vehicles in and get them serviced before something goes wrong, um, which is really quite exciting because that will drive costs down more than anything else because yeah. SMR costs cost go haywire when um, a driver ignores the, the light or it might be multiple drivers, so they definitely ignore the light and then the problem becomes becomes much bigger. We've spoken about connecting to the vehicle itself. What we're seeing now is the sort of growing impact of camera use, especially by commercial fleet. Yeah, you know, I think initially there was a lot of pushback to it, but from you know from an insurance perspective, especially, it, it it's important to be able to you know potentially cover yourself. Well, we're explained that this is more than anything it's about your safety mm -hmm. as a driver and getting your home safe at the end of the day, mm -hmm. and it's delivering that. Let's educate the driver. Um, and it works. We see a reduction in insurance claims. Yeah. And then the value of the claims also is less because normally the severity is less. So I think overall, you know, we've seen camera adoption as being crucial. Yeah, and ultimately it protects the driver. Yeah. yeah. You know, it, it, it's the evolution from telematics, really, in, in terms of that was a bit of black box that told you how the vehicle is driving. Yeah. That, this kind of takes it to the next level. But it, it helps on that kind of education piece. And um, we're, we're certainly strong advocates of using that information to help um, drive better driver behaviour, which ultimately, as the owner of the, um, the vehicles, means less accidents, less costs coming through, um, uh, less challenge in terms of third-party liabilities. Yeah. Um, so it's a, 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 but it is an education. And, and Jason, have you seen any examples of when that the use of that data has protected a business or protected a driver? I mean, we see the stats in terms of the, the ultimate return on investment in terms of less accidents, less incidents. And if the drivers are driving more carefully, there's the whole knock-on effect to the TCR and maintenance costs, et cetera, and downtime management. I guess sometimes you'll never know if you've what you've done has avoided an accident, but we certainly know where where clients have been able to sort of retrieve data and camera footage and being able to protect themselves. I think that's happened on numerous occasions. And there's there's also simple cases where not you're not even the cameras are involved, but where maybe a member of the public has suggested that um, your van knocked into my wall or it drove past, you know, really fast past my house or something like that. Um, and they can use telematics data to prove or disprove that they were there. Yeah. And obviously the camera's the same sort of thing that you can at least contextualize what happened whether your driver was at fault or not. So we get lots of, you know, lots of incidents around that. And we started out, we were talking about the um, the kind of real value of data within um, a corporate fleet environment is those um, cost controls. Because we do reporting, don't we, um, for some of our corporate customers that show 
how their drivers compare to drivers in the sort of industry, um, whether there's, you know, <laughs> getting lots of speeding fines yeah, yeah. or parking fines or whatever it happens to be. Not telematics, obviously, because uh, we haven't got that level of data, but um, we certainly do it with the things that we can, uh, we can, we can provide. And our customers do ask that, they, that especially, certainly in certain verticals. Yeah, yeah, we've got, that, yeah, if we've got a customer in construction, they're quite interested. How do we compare to other customers? And that's in that exactly sector. what we'll do. We'll benchmark yeah, yeah. it within the sector because yeah. generally we've got that that kind of um, data leak that that allows us to draw a pretty meaningful um, level of data from from kind of different sectors. But we'll even see customers who want to compare data um, inter division and. and, and they will almost compete yeah. to have the the lowest um, uh, cost of fleet, yeah. lowest fines, lowest penalties, um, lowest SMR costs w- within their own uh, business and uh, and interdivisional. So, and, and undoubtedly within that, and and just I, w- I was thinking just as we've kind of almost gone kind of full circle, Adam, we, we talked about you know, we mentioned earlier on we've been out and with clients who want to put us all in the kind of um, uh, same room uh, to, you know, whether it's an OEM, whether it's telematics, whether it's the, the, the uh, leasing company, et cetera. Um, and, the, you know, the importance of data to kind of driving down costs. And I guess probably be good to kind of get a feel for where you see or how you think we might better collaborate as an industry in order to to yeah. drive that data because there's can at times still feel a bit of uh, competing um, among these kind of different factions and and you know how we can better yeah I know we've looked at you know fixed term fixed mileage mm. but actually now with data that there's perhaps no reason moving forwards where you know especially where people maybe don't want to drive a vehicle all of the time yeah. well you could look at almost pay as you go type propositions that would you can track the vehicle using our data, for instance, to see what the mileage is like, how they're being driven, the type of maintenance or subject. Yeah, I mean, there is that opportunity to, to, to use data for the greater good um, in terms of, um, so touched on mobility as a service, so it could be a, a whole new year yeah. around, uh, around that, what that might look like. But, you know, from, from our perspective, um, I, you know, and as a kind of green sustainable lender with ambition to reduce overall emissions around that, then, then the, the kind of use of that vehicle and actually whether that vehicle can be shared among yeah. you know, multiple customers or can be more flexible in terms of the um, the, the lease term and, and how we more effectively um, uh, ut- utilise the access to mobility that we've got yeah. is, is undoubtedly um, you know on the on the lips for the future. Yeah, and that's, that's probably a, an area that we work on a lot of our customers we haven't mentioned so far is is that utilisation. So we do look at the data of a lot of our customers to say, you know, okay, you've got 2,000 vehicles spread across the country or, or so many in that region. And it's, do you need them all? Because once you start to use the data with customers, you do find out sometimes maybe, look, well, look, actually 20% of your fleet is only being used a bit, or maybe they keep spare vehicles in certain areas that, as, as it turns out, aren't being used very much. So you can perhaps, you know, help the customer recognise that actually we've got – 100 vehicles there, we barely use. Yeah. So actually, let's take those off and then perhaps let's have a rental model on those because, you know, it's just a sitting there half the time. Again, started out by talking about the, um, the need to be a, a data company um, that, that leases vehicles. Um, and what our customers are looking for, what we do more and more, is to provide that analysis of the data. So they don't want us to give them data or to um, just give them access to data. But it's that expertise that, that our people can bring from looking after the, you know, what's the biggest um, corporate um, and public sector fleet in the marketplace. Um, so the widest um, access to um, what best practice is around, um, around various sectors uh, to help build these recommendations. So if it's on cost, on contract amends or... Yeah. Um, uh, most efficient vehicle use or how to drive down accidents or fines or penalties or it is indeed um, uh, you know looking to uh, the, themselves and how they structure the fleet and policies and their emissions and sustainabilities then then that's absolutely um, our job as the, the the fleet expert to interpret that data draw it into one place and give the answers 
and recommendations yeah. um, to our clients and for them to see us as the experts. But if we, as a kind of circling back around to the conversation at the start, if we can take that and provide a self-service capability that gives that insightful thought leadership from a, a analytics and reporting perspective to the fleet manager, you know, in the, the corporate yeah. customer in effect, we can spend our time really enhancing new propositions, new reports, new analytics, yeah. and then launching those. So they've got a real catalog of information that can help them, you know, reduce cost or, you know, manage their fleets effectively. How exciting though, right? I mean, you know, you, you produce a fantastic sort of dashboard that is interactive for a customer and then seeing that launched, you know, live to the customer so they can play around with it and take yeah. feedback. That's, that's, you know, it's just so exciting. Right? We hope that you find this episode useful and look out for further episodes in the series.